What is the opposite of a secret? The fact that the ribbon mods are confusing as all hell. There are fewer truths more universally accepted than the fact that the ribbon market will chew you up and throw you off a cliff. I also don't think that it is disputed why that is, but let's quickly go over why anyways. Riven mods are the only item in the game that isn't immutable. My rank 7 primed flow and your rank 7 primed flow is exactly the same. As a matter of fact, all primed flow rank 7 mods are exactly the same and thusly it doesn't matter from whom you buy it. In stark contrast, the likelihood of two copies of the exact same ribbon mod ever existing is zero out of infinity, in the eye of probability that is. Here, let me show you. Let's use a melee ribbon as an example. There are 21 possible positive stats available on a melee ribbon. That is 21 options for the first stat, 20 for the second and 19 for the third. We also have 13 options for the negative stat. That already means that hitting a specific roll is 1 out of 103,740. But we're not done yet. Every stat rolls within a certain range. Keeping it simple, we will assume that range to be 15% and keep in mind this goes into decimal values. So that is a 150 more options per stat alone that is 506 million 250,000 additional options. But keep in mind that we have to multiply that by the 103,740. That means that the order you'll hit a very specific roll on a ribbon when you hit that button is 1 in 52 trillion 580 billion 375 million or a 0 0.0000000000000000019% or in other words, not particularly likely. Now, the reason why I just put you through that is to make it abundantly clear that when I say that every ribbon is unique and has to be evaluated on an individual basis, I mean it quite literally. What I'm about to say might sound completely outrageous, but stick with me. The stats you should be looking for when buying ribbons are not the same as when you want to sell them. What the hell could I possibly be on about here? Hot take. The majority of you guys don't understand what is actually good on a ribbon. I know this because I've sold ribbons with medical stats for a ridiculous amount of platinum, like a damage, crit chance, crit damage, natarok for two and a half thousand platinum, while on the other hand getting stuck with extremely powerful ribbons just because they weren't being perceived as such. Basically, what I'm getting at here is that when you want to buy a ribbon for personal use, you need to understand how damage scaling actually works. When you want to buy a ribbon for the purpose of profiting, you have to focus on the common understanding of what makes a ribbon great. Let's make a case study. Let's say that we have a Cronin Riven with critical chance, critical damage and damage. And let's say minus heavy attack combo efficiency. Now you might look at that and go, wow, that is amazing. Perfect even, but it really isn't. Now don't get me wrong, I certainly wouldn't complain if I got this role, but it could be better. First up, critical chance is commonly overrated, especially on melees. By running Blood Rush and Sacrificial Steel, you will have 700% increased critical chance. Adding 120% with a Riven will bring us up to 820, which is only a 17% increase. Meanwhile, Orc and Shatter and Gladiator Might only adds 150% critical damage. Adding a Riven with 70% would only bring us up to 220%, which is a 46% increase. Damage is also overrated. With Prime Pressure Point and Lethal Levitation from Naramon, we have 360%. Adding a Riven would bring us up to 470% base damage, which is a 30% increase. If we have a boost to our base damage, such as with Chroma's Vex armor, we will have more than 1200% base damage. Adding any more would simply be wasteful. 
By adding elemental damage instead of base damage, we can replace one of our elemental mods and with attack speed, we get the optimal DPS output. Now, let's be honest here. One of these are clearly sexier than the other, but that doesn't change the fact that the option on the right will produce more damage, which is why you would buy a Riven anyways. Now, this is just one example. I'm not going to break down the entire damage system unless you want me to, of course. Let me know down in the comments below. All right, let's leave reality for a moment. How do you profit from Riven mods? First up, we have to be able to determine which Riven mods have inherent value. What I mean by this is that only Rivens for certain weapons are desired enough to significantly increase in price when they hit those perfect stats. The easiest way to find this out is to visit Simlar and look under Riven history. We only really want to roll Rivens which cost 300 or more or trade Rivens which cost 200 or more. Now the next thing which you should absolutely go ahead and do is visit warframe.market. First, you will check the price of an unrolled ribbon of the weapon that you're trying to sell a ribbon for. Secondly, you will check to see if someone has the exact same stats as you. If, then check if it has been up for more than 3 days. If no, then you can ignore it. But if it has, then you'll know the absolute ceiling for the price of your ribbon. Now, let's talk about acceptable rolls on a Riven. First up, we have two perfect positives, such as damage plus crit damage on a Rubico. This will be worth about 100 to 150 more platinum than an unrolled Riven for the same weapon, so in other words, 100 plat profit. Then we have three perfect stats, such as crit chance, crit damage, and damage. This will be worth a bit more, about 300 profit. Any set of two perfect positives and a benign negative. This is also about 300 profit. Don't worry, we will get back to benign negatives later. Any set of three good stats and a benign negative. This is where we start to see some real profit. Depending on the weapon, this could easily hit 1000 platinum profit. The perfect roll of three perfect stats and a good negative. This is the dream, right? It's pretty much not going to happen. It's the one out of a 103,000 something we talked about earlier. But if it does happen, you're going to earn four and a half to five thousand platinum ish in profit now honestly the way that you are gonna profit from this is not by rolling it yourself it's by finding them when they occasionally crop up for as little as 1000 then just sitting on them for a couple of months until someone comes and picks it up for something like three to four to five thousand something like that but you truly have to understand what a god roll is like so that you don't end up just buying something for a thousand that's only worth 600 or something you know what i mean moving on now that you have a basic understanding let's go ahead and take a look at simlar First up, let's take a look at the history section. Please, please note that the median price is not the price of an unrolled ribbon, nor should you expect to be able to sell any given ribbon for that price. It is a good indicator for which weapon sells the best, but it doesn't mean anything in of itself. Also, keep in mind that the prices on Simlar is based on what people are selling their ribbons for, not what people are willing to pay for them. If someone has been advertising something in chat for two weeks, that probably means that it isn't worth 40000 Okay, with that out of the way, let's look at the most useful tool for pricing ribbons. Popular stats by price. Simlar tries to find the most desirable stats and for the most part it does a pretty good job. For the Kuva Brahma it's spot on. For making profit, not for a good ribbon. With the new core it's completely off. You want heat, status chance and fire rate or multi-shot. One of the main reasons why ribbon trading is so difficult is because it requires you to have knowledge of the weapon which the ribbon goes on. The Kuva new core is a primer. It doesn't matter how much damage it deals, it just matters how many status effects it can pump out. So, a quick recap. Go to warframe.market to find the unrolled price. Identify your stat distribution on Simlar and then at least do a slight bit of research on the weapon and then pray to God that the ribbon will actually sell. And finally, I would like to touch on some of the facts surrounding ribbon trading which are actually lies. You can get rich quick with ribbon trading. Nope. 
Raven trading is extremely slow, often taking several weeks to see returns on an investment. It is extremely risky. If you're not careful, you could end up being the customer instead. And it is extremely difficult. It takes a lot of mastery to do well in Riven trading. I've also heard that the prices for unrolled ribbons on warframe.market is supposed to be inaccurate, which is just absolutely insane. The prices reflect 1. This arbitrary number random Joe over here sold a ribbon for 3 years ago. Or 2. The actual price of sellers available right now. Which one do you think gives an accurate representation of the cost of an unrolled ribbon? And finally, not really a fallacy, but never trust anyone who isn't a public person. When someone is trying to buy your Rubico ribbon, damn it, isn't that relevant and Rubico has fallen off and you should just sell it to me for 500 platinum. However, trust me when I say that when they turn around and present this aforementioned ribbon, they will do it as though it is the salt of the earth to any future prospectors. Okay, stay safe out there and I'll see you in the next one. Hello there, aspiring Tenos coming at you with some live commentary. Anyways, I'm going to talk about each stat from the perspective of making a profit, not from the perspective of what actually makes a ribbon great, just because that would require me to talk about the entire damage system, and that's too big of a topic. Anyways, so some of the stats you would want is number one, critical damage. Most people understand that is the best stat, and it usually is. Not on status weapons, but most people are addicted to red crits, and so people prefer crit weapons. Uh, people think that you need critical chance as well. You don't, but for the um, purpose of profit, best stat, second best stat and then these are sort of tied for third and then the fourth be fourth best stat is elemental damage specific ones mainly heat and toxin really are the best uh, fire rate is sort of okay as well and that's it that's the only stats that you would want now to talk about some of the other stats as negatives in terms of if they are bad benign or good benign meaning that it doesn't actually hurt the weapon but obviously doesn't benefit from it either that's what makes it benign anyway so damage to faction uh, if it's damage to infested or corrupted people generally seem to think that is benign uh, magazine capacity if the weapon has a long reload then it's not benign but otherwise if it's not a problem sure you know it can be considered to be benign fire rate is never benign zoom is actually considered to be benign on almost every single last weapon and on vectors and on rubico it's actually considered to be a fourth positive because it allows you to especially in idle and hunts um, you can zoom uh, rather you can scope in and you don't zoom in as much which makes it easier to hit your target um, you never want impact slash puncture these physical damage types never want those projectile speed is considered to be benign on almost every single last weapon um, actually on like Akaplasmo and Nataruk, the weapons in that family, sometimes you can hit the target twice, so it can be considered as a uh, fourth positive on those weapons. Status chance, you never want that as negative. Weapon recoil is benign in almost every single last case. Keep in mind that it's reversed, so the positive is less weapon recoil and the negative is more weapon recoil. So be careful of that, right? Because I've made that mistake a few times myself. Ammo max... It's not benign on most weapons, do your research, but for example on the uh, Kuva Brahma, going from 5 shots total down to 3, that's a disaster, you would never want to do that. Reload speed is not worth having, um, you, you wouldn't want this as a negative, unless it was on a bow, or yeah, I guess that's a Rogisa bow, but weapons that doesn't need to reload, right? Status duration is considered to be quite bad in most cases, if you're going to be applying status effects at all especially damage over time ones you do not want this punch through on most weapons are considered to be kind of benign unless the weapon has some built-in punch through and relies on it but it's not really a thing again do your research that one kind of depends but most of the time it's not a problem now let's go and take a look at crone in here i just want to see if there's anything different here that i need to talk about yeah reigns so um yeah reigns is not good but it feels good to have and people seem to think it's okay. Let's say you have like critical damage and melee damage and minus, um, I don't know, heavy attack efficiency, right? And then you have reins as well. The Riven isn't ruined because you have the reins. It's okay. It would be better if you didn't have it, but it's certainly still a good Riven. On the other hand, if you had like finisher damage on it, then it would be not bricked, but quite bad. Um, 
Let's see anything else. So again, you don't want status chance. Obviously, you don't want elemental damage as a negative. Finisher damage on almost every single last build is considered to be benign. Heavy attack efficiency also benign. Like heavy attack uh, hybrid builds doesn't exist anymore. Not really. Uh, chance to gain combo. You don't really want to have this. This can actually be okay on weapons where you build your combo and then you keep it for the rest of the mission. It's not that big of a deal. So it can actually be okay. It's not benign, but it's not terrible either. Status duration, you don't want a uh, critical chance while sliding. If it's not specifically on uh, a polearm, I mean, I guess a whip as well. No one uses whips. So polearms, if it's not on a polearm, this can actually be considered as being benign. Um, and then combo duration. So these last ones is a bit special. On the Glaive, uh, the Glaive Prime specifically, which is the best melee weapon in the game. It's probably the best weapon in the game, period. Just look at the goddamn median price. Um, initial combo is actually better than having uh, just combo, uh, melee damage. Just being able to always have 3x combo for your constant heavy attacks is really good. And combo duration is not benign on most weapons, but specifically when you have it on a glaive because you're always going to be sitting at 3x or 2x depending upon if you have initial combo on the ribbon uh combo multiplier right so when you have a attack you're going to drop down to zero and then immediately because of corrupt charts and maybe initial combo on the ribbon you will go right back up to two or three i suggest i've said low one but whatever uh two or three combo count and so that combo is never going to decay so less duration on your combo doesn't do anything so that makes it benign, but only specifically on that weapon. Anyways, that's everything. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're still here, you're a legend. And I'll see you in the next one.